Well, good morning, Key Stage One, and a warm welcome to our collective worship. I'm Reverend Chris, and I'm in the church just over the field on a very sunny morning recording this so that we can be with you. And first of all, I'm going to hope that you will forgive me for having my own sort of dress down day today. But we're doing some work on the roof this morning and I have to keep going up and down a very uh, narrow staircase, which is a bit cobwebby. So I've dressed like this so I don't get too dirty. So I'm going to ask you this question to get us started. I wonder, and you can put your hand up if you know the answer to this, how many days are there in a week? So I'm wondering how many people put their hands up. I wonder how many people were able to say the answer. I'll give you just a moment in case you're answering the question. And you might have said seven days. Seven days make up a week. So I wonder what you've been doing in your last seven days, and I wonder also what you might do in your next seven days. That will be really interesting. But today, we're going to look at a very special seven days, the seven days in which God created the world and everything that is in it, all in seven days. And that story, is right at the beginning of the Bible. It's in the first book of the Bible, which is called Genesis, and it is on the very first page of that book, and it starts in the very first column of the very first page. So with all those firsts, you know that we're talking about something very special that happened at the beginning. So let's hear some more about it. Well, I wonder which of these things you might be doing this week. Will you be ballooning or bouncing or sliding or something completely different? But whatever you are going to do, you can only do it because of the amazing way in which God created the heavens and the earth. Because what if? What if our daytime never ended? How tired would you get? And if there's space, stretch out your arms like the person on the screen and pretend to give your biggest yawn. I hope you didn't fall asleep. Or what if it was dark all of the time? How lost would you get? But on the first day, God said, let there be light. And he gave us both night and day. But what if there was nothing to separate the seas from each other? Nothing. Zero. Naught, just one sea crashing into the next one. But don't worry, because on the second day, God said, let's have some wide open air around the earth. And he named it sky. And just take a look at our different skies. Sometimes they're bright blue. Sometimes they're cloudy, but whatever they are, let's thank God for them all. And what if there was only sea? Where would we live? Imagine searching every day for dry land. So why don't you pretend now? that you're searching like the man on the screen, searching around you everywhere for something that is not sea. But don't worry, because on the third day, God said, let dry ground show. And he gave us all a place to live, and he gave us a place 
to grow our food and to grow our plants and our trees. Can you imagine what if there was no sun or moon or stars to guide us? Imagine a sky without any of those things. However, would the three kings have found their way to baby Jesus? But don't worry, because on the fourth day, God said, let lights shine in the sky, the sun, the moon and the stars. So the next time there is a clear night, take another look at it. Who needs fireworks to make a spectacular night sky? And what if? What if we had no animals or birds to share our world with? Imagine how lonely life would be without all of our pets. But don't worry, because on the fifth day, God made every kind of sea animal and every kind of bird. And he made them all to share this place with you and with me. And what if God had forgotten all about us? Well, don't worry, because he didn't. On the sixth day, God made people like himself. But what's going on with that mirror? Perhaps that's all a mistake. Perhaps that's the wrong slide. So we'll better come back to that a bit later on. And now, as we reflect upon the things that we have seen, imagine visiting a famous place and taking a photograph. And put your hands up now if you know where this place is or what it is. And I'm sure that your teacher will be able to tell you the answer if you don't know already. Or what about this one? Do you know where this is? And I'm sure that you've seen this place before. When we visit famous places, we might take photographs and we might all take them from a slightly different place or a slightly different angle. We might take them at different times of the day or the evening so that the light is different, but they all look just about the same. But that is not how God created us. So we're back to that picture with the mirror. Because just imagine who is in that mirror. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Well, I can tell you, you see someone special, somebody who is like nobody else and somebody who is so precious to God that when he spent a whole week creating the earth and the heavens, he left you and me to the very end. You are that special, the most precious day's work in God's busy week. Well, after all of that, God needed a good day's rest. So on the seventh day, he blessed it and made it holy. Which we take every week as our Sunday, which is our holy day, a day created so that we can rest too. So I hope that you 
enjoyed that story from the Bible, from the very beginning of the Bible, all about the first seven days. And I wonder if we might now put our hands together and we'll bow our heads as we say this prayer. And if you would like to make this prayer yours, if you just say the word Amen at the end. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for those seven days, for everything that you have created in our world, for everything that we enjoy in it. We pray that we will learn how to look after everything that you have created, that we will protect it and keep it as precious as you care for us. And we pray too for our next seven days that we will also be the light of the world and that we will care for those we meet and look after those we love. And finally, Father, we thank you so much for every gift that you have given to us, that you have made each one of us different and each one of us special. So that when we look in any mirror, we also see the wonder of your creation. We thank you, Father, for those blessings. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. So if you would like to say that with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen amen so thank you for spending some time with us this morning and for letting me come into your classroom in this way and I'm now going to go back up that windy old staircase and up onto the roof. So you'll think about me doing that. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. God bless.